I'm Bumble Pre and I'm happily in control. I go by Bumble Pre on YouTube and on YouTube I pre pretty much talk about everything that's just stigmatized in society. So the things that no one wants to talk about. So I'll talk about things about disability, things about incontinence, and yeah. I picked Bumble Pre because I thought it was cute. Honestly, it's interesting because I don't even like bugs and it's like I got this tattoo on my wrist that has a bumblebee on it and not once did I ever think I get a tattoo of a bug on my hand because I don't like them. So like if, instead of like naming it like incontinence pre or something, um, I just didn't want people to think I was only going to be talking about incontinence. I wanted to be able to reach out to more communities, not just one community. So it was like... For me, if I just went by Bumble Pre, it was kind of not um, limiting it to the amount of things I could talk about. And that, that way I could have also talked about multiple sclerosis. I could have talked about every individual symptom I went through with MS. And with Bumble Pre, it's like when I finished university, um, I realized that I needed, I, I just wanted to have more subscribers and more people like finding me because I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere, even though I was only at like 1.4K. Um, but for me, I realized that shortly after finishing university, I'm just talking because this is going through my head right now, but, um, I realized after short, shortly after finishing university, I felt like I had no purpose. I knew that I was a good educator, but I just didn't know how to implement that with other things outside of a, teaching in a school board. So I was like, okay, so let me bring that over with YouTube. And then with YouTube, um... What I was thinking was, um, I, I was thinking about like, uh, how I was previously mentioning how I didn't just want to talk about one community. I wanted to talk about quite a few of them. So what I did was I had a bunch of cue cards from Teachers College and I laid them out on the ground. And at the top of my tier, I, I was like, let's make a tree diagram because I taught kids how to do tree diagrams to branch out ideas. So I was like, let me do that. So the top of my tier was multiple sclerosis because that's what I originally thought about with making videos on YouTube. And every branch that stemmed down from that were the individual symptoms I was going through with multiple sclerosis. And then in my mind, I was like, oh, that could be every individual community I can target or to, uh, like um, cater towards on my YouTube channel. And then the third tier that would follow shortly after that would be branched off. So like one of the symptoms I was going through was um, difficulties with my vision. So the branch that would come down after that was like, yeah, not incontinence. The branch that would come down under... Um, Difficulties with vision was double vision and then nystagmus. And then at another tier in that second tier that was followed under multiple sclerosis, where I kind of titled this one adult diapers because people wear adult diapers for different reasons. So with that being said, the third tier was incontinence and then there was also an ABDL community. And then in my mind, it was kind of like a ding, ding, ding. This was like the one branch I just had to go towards because I felt like there was more people not only experiencing incontinence, but also struggling with the same things I was struggling with with um, incontinence and it's just even just also wearing diapers um, like not even like like w when you're wearing diapers it's like you have this um, understanding that it's only babies that wear diapers and that it's only the elderly that wear diapers but then what happens when you're in between that age because that was one thing that I was also struggling with a lot with um, because I just felt like the anom anomaly where I just felt like I didn't fit in because I wasn't a baby, nor was I an older person. So I started making videos on YouTube, um, I think it was like in, it was a year after my diagnosis, so like 2018. Why I decided to make videos on YouTube was because I honestly felt alone. I felt like I wasn't able to talk to anyone in person about what I was going through with MS. And then also with my incontinence, it's like people always looked at me weird. So I just wanted to find people just like me and I felt like I found a community that was also going through incontinence and multiple sclerosis. And for me, I've just always been the kind of person to just want to educate people in general. Like, I mean, I went to university to become an early childhood educator and then teacher's college followed shortly after that. But I really love educating people on my YouTube channel because a lot of people don't know things about incontinence or if they do, they just don't want to speak up. And I just felt like because I felt like I had a voice and I just wanted to voice my opinion on things. I just thought I would continue making videos on YouTube talking about things no one wanted to talk about. 
I make my YouTube videos for, honestly, right now, it's for the community that goes through incontinence and disabilities in general. Uh, when I was first, uh, when I first posted my very first video talking about my multiple sclerosis journey, honestly, it was more so for myself because I was trying to see people see if people were going through what I was going through because I just felt like maybe people weren't really going through it. The things that I was going through, like with incontinence and with multiple sclerosis. Um, but then over time, I feel like I have like this need to want to continue making videos because it allows me to support people that are that are feeling the way I once did. And I know what that feels like, that feeling of depression and fear and anxiety and it's like I would just hate for someone to feel that way so for people to watch my videos if I could be that reason that someone smiles it would it would just make me feel so good make me feel like my struggles had purpose all along but yeah I was scared I was scared because people told me not like when I say people I'm talking about family it was just coming out of love they just told me not to do it because I've been bullied a lot and they're like you're gonna get bullied even more now because you're literally telling people about having a disability and I was scared to film that video it took me about a year to finally have the courage to post the video and once I posted it I was still scared but after I posted the video it was probably like a minute into posting it so someone close to me was telling me that it was the most stupidest thing I could have done because at that point I was in my second year in university so I was still trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do career-wise and I remember this person telling me that I was going to become an expense to my future manager and they told me to delete the video. Again, it was coming out of love, I guess, but to me it was really hard for me to understand um, how not to delete the video because it was kind of my cry for help but I couldn't put it out into words. So I was very nervous when I posted my first video as well because that video was 30 minutes and that was my very first video I posted on YouTube. And 30 minutes is a, a, a lot for talking and especially because I just I didn't really know how to make videos at that point too. So I remember not even being as organized as I am when I'm filming a video where I have like kind of like a thesis to like my paper, but really it's like the title of a video. Um, but it was really hard because I didn't even know what I was doing and I didn't even know if people were actually gonna watch my video or if I was just talking to the wall. As I get older, I feel that I will continue to make videos talking about incontinence as well as disability too because with multiple sclerosis, there's no cure. So because I'm sharing my journey on my YouTube platform, it's like I wanna continue to build onto that and yeah, just document everything as I go. I began my journey with incontinence shortly after my multiple sclerosis diagnosis. Um, and the way that it developed over time was quite interesting because when I was first going through incontinence, it was shortly after my multiple sclerosis diagnosis. And because of this, I wasn't too upset about it because I knew why it was happening, but I didn't really know how to deal with the incontinence. So what I would do um, for two years was while having incontinence and going to all my university classes, some of them with a wet bum. Um, it pretty much just wet myself outside in public and it was so traumatizing. I didn't know how to help myself because no, again, no one was talking about incontinence. So I was just like, maybe I'm just the only one that's going through this. Um, and then when I think about it now, it's like, I feel like I've come a long way because I've been able to accept having incontinence, accept being able to wear, accept just even wearing adult diapers in general because it, it takes a lot in that it's really hard to accept having to wear it because as an adult, if you're like not wearing like the, like like as an adult, you have to wear like the adult undergarments, but why is this adult wearing something that a baby's wearing when she's not even a baby? And that was hard for me to understand. So multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. Um, it affects your brain and your spinal cord because your immune system just basically attacks it. But yeah. So I have relapsing remitting MS. There's four types of MS. Relapsing remitting is one of like the first stages of MS from what I understood. And with relapsing remitting MS, my relapses come and go. Um, and the last time I relapsed was seven years ago. Um, and yeah.
So my first sign of MS was my memory just declining. I just couldn't remember things, like especially while being in university, when I would study for tests and exams, I just couldn't remember anything at the pace of the other people in my classes because they were able to remember things so quickly. And I was just sitting there for an entire week trying to memorize like one sentence. And I just felt like university wasn't for me. And that was the point where I realized something could have possibly been wrong, but maybe that was like in that, at that time, I didn't understand that something was wrong and MS was kind of messing with my memory. Um, and yeah, I was just happy that I wasn't going to pass away because I remember always going to bed every single night while being in university, believing that there wasn't going to be a tomorrow and that believing that I wasn't going to wake up the next day. So when I was told I had MS, I was so happy because it meant that I got to live and it just it, it felt good too because when I was in high school being bullied a lot it's like I just I, I actually wanted to be here for once and it, just, it felt really nice so yeah my um can I get a little personal here Go ahead, I was like my ex was kind of rude about it he's like did you meditate today did you do this did you do that and it's like it was just really annoying because it's like you do realize I have MS right like meditation is not going to cure everything right now and I just got really annoyed by it so I was just forced to meditate and it's like it's like I thought it was helping me but it was kind of helping me but it just was helping me when he wasn't there because it's like when I would open my eyes he'd get really mad at me and I just like I'm sorry I just can't close my eyes for so long and then it's like there'd be moments too like when it's like it's Wim Hof's breathing exercises that's really helpful for people that was one thing I actually did get into um, because it's like um, you hold your breath for a whole minute straight it sounds like very difficult but honestly at that point I felt like I was just being forced to just not breathe and I just didn't like it at all but I just did it because I was told to do it and I was like okay so one way you can support someone that has MS or maybe even incontinence is just don't say this thing of being that like that able-bodied person of just being like oh if i had ms i would do this differently or if i had this disability i would do this differently well you don't have the disability so how can you say that like that's just the one thing i always got really frustrated with because it's like you don't get it you just, just uh, sorry. yeah so honestly just don't tell people what you would do differently because unless you're going through it then maybe you can i mean have a voice and say something that'll be helpful but if it's like you're not going through it just don't just stop talking because it's like that's just the one thing I got really frustrated with just being like having to hear someone else tell me what they would do differently when they're not even going through what I was going through and it's like so one thing people can do to support people with MS is just letting them know that you'll be there for them I feel like that's a big one because for me um, I didn't feel like I had much of that and I did struggle in silence because of that. Um, just let your loved one with MS know that you're there for them. And if they're also going through incontinence too, be supportive about it. Don't judge the person with the MS or just even just having incontinence or just wearing the diapers for because they're just wearing it. Don't judge them for it because it's not a big deal. And I feel like a lot of people always forget about that, like the people who are wearing the diapers, where it's like they always feel like they need to stay, like they need to just you know, stop talking and just not say anything. Um, and you know what? That's kind of hard on me too, because it's like I feel like I think there is like a few people who do talk about incontinence. I say a few, I'm, I'm just assuming. I don't really search this up on YouTube, but um, not, enough, not, not, not enough people talk about incontinence it's just that i feel like people some people just assume that you just can't accomplish anything in life and i don't think that's true because at 17 i started university at 19 i got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and at 23 i didn't just have one but i had two university degrees all while not being able-bodied now how many able-bodied people would be able to tell you that so that's why i just don't like the whole misconception thing because people just like to assume that not like the people who aren't able-bodied can't accomplish anything in life but it's not true um but yeah i based off of just having experience with ms for seven years i would just tell them that ms doesn't define you um and this is the one thing i struggled a lot with too because i especially with making videos on youtube 
people always would say to me, oh, you know, you're making MS define you. You're making incontinence define you. But then just because I spoke up doesn't mean that I'm making it define me. I'm just trying to support people just like me, but then also helping myself to talking about it because it made me feel good. But yeah. So what I think about MS now as opposed to seven years ago when I first got diagnosed was that now it's like because I'm confident about the things I go through, it's like I think MS is just a joke. Whereas before, um, shortly after my diagnosis, I just felt like I was always sad all the time. I went through depression. And now it's like I know how to deal with MS. So it's kind of like to me, it's like, MS can put me through so many things now and I'll just fight through it because it's like I know things get hard like just yesterday taking the train to come here it was difficult for me because I had to sit down a lot of the times but then it's like knowing that I have MS it's like I just um what do I think about MS now Honestly, MS just stresses me out, but it's like when I'm unable to do certain things, I can remember things and then also um, have a difficult time with walking. It's like I always feel that MS does not define me. Um, and this is something I also did struggle with in the very beginning where I just felt like MS was controlling every move I made, um, where it just always made me feel so sad. Um, I just feel like.